Hi there, I'm Dr. Andrea Labuti, and I am gonna answer handedness. What is the basis for the claim or belief that left-handed people think differently compared to right-handed people? Left-handed people or right-brain dominant people are inventive, artistic, and emotional, while right-handed people or left-brain dominant people are logical, analytical, and even tempered, or so we were told to believe. It turns out that the left hemisphere is usually the dominant hemisphere, even in left-handed people. Only 20% of left-handed people are right hemisphere dominant, so the majority of us are left hemisphere dominant. The left hemisphere is responsible for activities on the right side of the body, like being right-handed. The left hemisphere is good at logic and analytical reasoning. The two main language centers are in the left hemisphere. Broca's area, which deals with verbal expression and speech production, and Wernicke's area, which deals with verbal comprehension. Interestingly, nonverbal autistics with obvious deficits in Broca's area have fully intact Wernicke's areas. They understand everything they hear. The right hemisphere is responsible for activities on the left side of the body. The right hemisphere is involved in creativity, perception, and visual spatial processing. Many of the generalizations and myths about handedness arose from the studies done in the 50s and 60s. Roger Sperry's famous split brain experiments when the two hemispheres were actually disconnected furthered research into the functionality of each hemisphere. Today, we know much more about each hemisphere, thanks in part to functional MRI, which is a technique for measuring and mapping uh, brain activity that is non-invasive but it has muddied the waters when it comes to generalizations about handedness and thinking. Neurofeedback, which is a biofeedback technique that trains brain activity, further maps the specific functions of the brain. And I'll, I'll tell you what those are, because it's fascinating when you can map it yourself. So they, they map the three lobes, frontal lobes, parietal lobes, and temp well actually parietal's here, frontal's here, and temporal is here. So frontal lobes, left side is responsible for working memory, concentration, executive planning, and positive emotions. The right frontal is episodic memory and social awareness. Parietal lobes, left side, problem solving, math, complex grammar, and attention. Parietal right, spatial awareness and geometry. Temporal left, word recognition, reading, language, memory. Temporal right, object recognition, music, social cues, and facial recognition. So can we really make generalizations about handedness and the way people think? It seems that the research is more complicated and a sweeping generalization about thinking and handedness is not really accurate. When I look at the above functions and I consider my right-handed son with autism, he's all over the place. He has definite strengths and weaknesses on both sides of the brain. He is excellent at problem solving, math, and memory. That's the left brain. And he is excellent at spatial awareness, geometry, and music, which is right brain. So it's sort of fun to think about what you're good at and which side of the brain controls that function. So understanding the functionality of the hemispheres of the brain is fascinating when you apply it to your own strengths and weaknesses. While we can certainly share dominant characteristics like, oh, I'm a really creative or you're really analytical, um, it does not appear that sweeping generalizations are very accurate. So think about um, uh, handedness and individuality, right? It's too complicated to make sweeping generalizations. So I am here because I wanna change what the world views autism as. If you like what you're hearing, go to my website, andrealabuti.com, A-N-D-R-E-A-L-I-B-U-T-T-I.com, um, where I share lots of different and new ideas about autism. Thanks for listening, and I hope that helps. Have a great day.